Let's take a look at the RTX 4090 Ti cooling design, cooler design. This one's exciting. Alleged NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 Ti Founders Edition graphics card cooler is pictured. Massive cooling design with huge heat sink, base plate with both GPU and memory coverage. It better have memory coverage because you know where you guys f***ed up last time? <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look. It's going to need it too because we're supposed to have the fastest memory ever released on this particular one. An alleged NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 Ti Founders Edition graphics card cooler has been leaked out over at ChipL Forums. The cooler might give us the very first look at the updated Founders Edition design being featured on the next-gen Ada Lovelace GPUs. Recently, there have been reports that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 series graphics cards could launch as early as mid of July. This would suggest that we are just two to three months away from the first unveil of the next-gen lineup based on Ada Lovelace graphics card architecture. Poised to be both powerful and power-hungry, the GeForce RTX 40 series lineup is going to require some beefy cooling, and it looks like NVIDIA is giving a major uplift to its existing Founders Edition design to meet the 450 to 600 watt spec. As you can see here, here's some pictures. Look at that, the mold for the little X there. The alleged GeForce RTX 4090 Ti pictures show us three different segments of the FE cooler. First up, we have the silver colored metal skeleton that goes around the heatsink to give it a nice finish. Currently, the metal plate features a small logo of the card that it is equipped on. The leak plate suggests that it will probably go on the RTX 4090 Ti flagship graphics card. But one thing to point out is that the positioning of this logo has been changed from the right to the left. This part will be only visible on the bottom side of the graphics card, so it doesn't mean a lot where the label is positioned, but from a marketing standpoint, it may look weird. So here's the underside of it, I'm thinking. And you can see here we got we got copper, 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 copper. I don't know what's under here or under here, but copper, copper, copper. The part that's most interesting is the heat sink itself. It looks like NVIDIA is now going to utilize a bigger base plate that will not only cool the GPU, but the memory dies too. Now, remember yesterday we talked about the, the RTX 3080 uh, Asus version with the Noctua cooler. And the big important part about that was basically the copper plate that extends past the core and cools the memory dies. Now I was incorrect on saying that most or that all of the other ones only had the aluminum. The EVGA 3080s, the newer revisions, have updated to utilizing a copper base plate. Somewhere down the line during this previous generation, it was very apparent that the typical designs for cooling memory modules were not going to be sufficient, especially as memory speeds get pushed and they're going to be getting pushed even further. So I think here is what we're seeing is just a natural industry shift transformation into basically giving us better cooling on the memory modules, not only because miners need it, but obviously you're going to be needing it in the gaming as well. What, like we saw with the RTX 3090, which put memory modules on the back of the PCB, there were times even in other tasks where these memory modules were just overheating to the point of killing the graphics card. Specifically, uh, from the earliest I can remember would be things like New World. Now, I know New World was dri driver related as well and had some other problems, but it's important to note that these were th some issues that were going on, right? And I think that this is just going to be the design that all the third party manufacturers have to move to as well. What does that mean, though, for consumers? That does mean that you will have a slight uptick in pricing because it will be more expensive to not only redesign pretty much all the coolers from the third parties, and you're going to want to be very careful because if there are cheap versions of these GPUs that are not using copper cooling on the memory, memory modules, you're not going to want to pick them up, right? But it does mean that they're going to have to do some more R&D, redesign their coolers, all of that sort of thing.
And if the founders or additions are doing it, you're, you can be pretty positive that it needs to be done. Currently, NVIDIA uses thermal pads to dissipate heat from the memory dies to the heatsink on its 3090 and 3090 Ti Founders Edition graphics cards. The new heatsink layout will allow NVIDIA to cool at least 12 GDDR6X memory chips. It is likely that the same configuration as the 3090 Ti's PCB will be used here with four GDDR6 chips on the right, left side, right and left side, three on the top and one at the bottom, with NVIDIA expected to utilize higher spec GDDR6X chips on its next gen cards. The extra cooling will be really essential for the flagship AD102 parts. There's also a large aluminum heat spreader for the VRMs and two thermal pads for various components. The heat sinks on the sides also seem to be upgraded from 23 fins to 24 fins on the leaked design and you can see that right here we can also see heat pipes leading from the main heat sink to the one on the back the heat is going to be dissipated from the heat sink and out of the card through a similar flow through cooling design as the existing founders edition cards with that said the card does look like it will be three or even four slots this time around now it remains to be seen if the RTX 4090 Ti cooler happens to leak out much earlier or if it will be part of the lineup itself. So far, there are only reports that the RTX 4090 will be first to market with the RTX 4090 Ti releasing later on. This could be an early design for the Ti cooler or it is likely that Nvidia made a few prototype coolers and decided to go with the non-Ti variant first. Again, this is alleged photo of what might be the next gen NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 series cooling design, but we cannot say for sure, so do treat it as a rumor for now. So here you have the 3090 Ti Founders Edition. As you can see, it's it's a different design, right? This copper plate or this copper plate is all, only on the core and doesn't extend to the VRMs. And I think obviously like extending to the VRMs, like we see here, is going to be massive. As I stated earlier as well, this is what some of the cards, have, the third party manufacturers have been doing now on the 3080s and 3070s as well. So I think that it makes a lot of sense. I like as far as this rumor goes, sure, it's a rumor, but it makes a lot of sense. And I would believe pretty much every word of it. As far as needing to upgrade to that, I think it's necessary because we're talking about 24, uh, I believe, or 21 gigabits per second on the memory modules upgraded, right? We're talking about a 384-bit bus, one terabyte of bandwidth. I, I, you're just going to overheat too much if you're not sufficiently cooling that. And I think a way to do that is extending that copper base plate and getting some more heat pipes in there to dissipate it to the outside. These things could still basically have overheating issues right out of the box though. Like we're aware that we are talking about a 450 watt TDP with the potential after overclocks on the third party manufacturers to go easily up to 600 watts. This is what we've also already been seeing on the 3090 Ti with even flashes on the 3090 Ti taking us up to almost a whole entire thousand watts, right? Which is absolute insanity for just a single graphics card. And that does mean that the card's pulling a ton of power. And what comes with a ton of power? Well, obviously heat comes with a ton of power and you have to have a way to dissipate it. And I think Nvidia is learning from the 3000 series, specifically the 3090s and the 3080s or, and the 3090 Ti's, excuse me, that they're going to have to resolve this problem if they expect the cards to not only run at their full potential, but also last longer, right? Because heat is a huge killer. And when you're pushing, once again, that much power, it's going to cause a lot of problems if you're not dissipating that heat properly. I'm excited to also start seeing leaks of what the third third party board manufacturers are going to be designing for these particular GPUs. I think we're going to see some craziness, obviously. With that heat dissipation that's going to be required, we are going to have massive GPUs. They're talking about three 
to four slot GPUs. Your motherboards, they have multiple PCI slots. Say bye to your PCI slots, bro, because you ain't going to use them <laughs> unless you're going water cooling, right? And that's the other point is like at what point, like if you're building at your house and you want, you know, a, reg a normal sized PC, it's almost as if to get a normal sized PC built in, you're going to have to go water cooling, some sort of custom setup where you get a water block that's going to be a lot thinner. As far as mining goes, uh, you're talking about essentially going, basically reducing the size of your mining rigs by, you know, by 50%. If you have basically pretty common four slot GPUs, well, you're buying, if it's an open air rig, server cases, probably not even in the question at this point. And then if you're doing an open air rig, you're going to end up, you know, buying a 12 card frame and just putting six cards on it. And that's a legitimate thing that's going to be happening here. It's going to be really interesting to see, like I said, what the third party board manufacturers do, but the heat sinks are going to have to get bigger because they're going to have to cool a lot more power. And that's just the nature of the beast. The only other way you're going to dissipate that heat is with some sort of liquid cooling, right? And if they don't, if they don't do that, if you're not buying a car that's like that and it's air cooling, well, you're just going to end up with super, super thick boys, right? I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.